Hey weirdos and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma Abe and we are going to be doing my January wrap up. I read a lot of books. I read a total of 17 books this past month. That is a lot. I was really distracted by a lot of things in my personal life so I needed books to help distract me further from that. So let's get straight into it. Disclaimer time! I cannot pronounce things. I probably will be mispronounced things. Mispronouncing things. Yay! I'm sorry. It is just part of life here on this channel. I try to pronounce things correctly, but sometimes it doesn't happen. The first book I read this month is Stephen King's Salem's Lot, and I put this on hold so long ago, like back when I read Dracula, and I want to say... September. So this has been hauled on for a while and it was, yeah, really like the first book I read in the new year. <laughs> Obviously, and I liked it. I thought it was very good. I thought the premise was really interesting. I really liked how atmospheric it was. I read this on audiobook and following along, so that was really fun. <laughs> I told my dad I was reading this and he was like, okay, be ready to be scared. And I don't know if I would call it scary as much. I just really, really liked the atmosphere of it. It kind of lost me a little bit towards the end, but I still really thoroughly enjoyed it, and it was well worth the wait. I wish there were more copies of the audiobooks. Library needs to get on this stuff. I really also enjoyed the introduction. That really gave a nice insight into why Stephen King wanted to write it the way he did and what I did with the characters, but yeah, I really liked all of these, like, things that it wasn't necessarily with third person, so this particularly, that's just a hospital report. I really liked that. That was really fun. Really good book. I give this a four star because it didn't really well me, but I still really enjoyed it, and I think it was really good. The next book I picked up is... Doctor Who's The Only Good Dalek by Justin Richards and Mike Collins. I picked this up because when I was filming a video, my phone was being ridiculous um, while I was filming. And this is a graphic novel, so here's, here's some of the art. And because this is a graphic novel, there is no audiobook, so I read this with my eyeballs. And yeah, I enjoyed it. I like that it doesn't take any story that we know. It's a new story with new aliens, and it was really interesting. I don't, I don't know, I think that I'm giving this a three star. The doctor's, you know, techno babble doesn't really translate well to comic book form, just because... I feel like you had to keep reading it over and over, and I did catch myself at multiple times being like, okay, what happened? Which character is who? And yeah, I don't know. I still enjoyed it, but not as much as I have enjoyed other, th other things this month. So, three star. So, I read this next book pretty much a very close. Oh my god, you can see all my crap. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to see my deodorant. I don't know. Just a thought. This next book I read like practically right after I got it because I've been wanting to read this book for so long and that is The Long Walk by Stephen King and my brothers were so kind and they hunted this down with me for the holidays and I read it practically right away and I really enjoyed this. To me this is a five star. This is my favorite Stephen King book that I've read so far. Granted I've only read three <laughs> but yeah I just really really connected with this book and I really loved it. It was gross in all of the wonderful ways. In the description I'm going to put a link to Savvy's review of this book because her review is what made me want to read the book. Essentially it's about all these these young guys who um, are horny as fuck <laughs> which was very enjoyable. That was hilarious in my opinion and they enter this walk and only one person wins and they win amazing things. And I really enjoyed it. Maybe it's just because I walk a lot. I walk three miles a day. Aside from all the other walking, yeah, I just really enjoyed how gross this was. I don't want to spoil anything, but I wish the ending was a little bit more than it was, but I also understand why Stephen King ended it that way. I don't really think you could end it any other way. I just really loved how twisted this book was. Pick it up. This is a Stephen King book that does not get enough attention and I loved it. This has been my favorite. I just, oh my god, I could not put it down. I, I would force myself to have to go to sleep at night 
and yeah, I loved it. I I want to reread it, and I probably will reread it in the um, foreseeable future. Yeah, damn, I really love this. Ooh, I should say I read this with audiobook and following along. The next book I have, I don't actually have a physical copy of. Next book I read was The Truffle Underground, and I read this obviously just with the audiobook, and I really loved it. It was really fascinating. Truffle hunting and how truffles get to people's plates and all that was never really something I'd put much thought into, and oh my god, it's crazy. There is so much thievery, and I would just think about all those poor dogs that are poisoned. It's terrible, but it's it was so interesting, and it was so interesting also how when this reporter would try and get people to talk to him. People didn't really want to talk to him because they were really suspicious. So it was really interesting like how he was able to get all of this information. And he goes into that in the book and it's a short little book. I think the audiobook was about six hours. Yeah, I would say invest in it. It's a really interesting gripping story. I would say it's a four out of five. I really enjoyed it. I had a whole fun time. I remember like I would stop it and because I was home on break. I would talk to my mom. I'm like, Mom, like, this is a crazy book. Like, what? I never knew, like, truffles were so, like, crazy. And, oh my god, it's so interesting. Because, like, apparently, like, truffles, some of them are fake. All of what goes into, like, finding a perfect truffle. Read it, please. It's so interesting. The next book I read is The Outlaw Ocean. Journeys Across the Last Untamed Frontier by Ian Erb. Bina. Oh my gosh, I love this book so much. It was crazy. I mean, it talks about lots of things from Sealand, which is an abandoned oil rig that this family turned into their own country, to sea slavery. And it's crazy. Oh my god, sea slavery is just tragic. The author actually calls us out. He theorizes that if the sea slavery was happening to people of Western cultures, like Americans or Europeans, then people would know all about it and they'd be so angry and upriled and all of these things. But since it's happening to people of color and people from like Vietnam, like the South Pacific, no one really cares, which was really jarring. And I have to agree, I don't really think he's wrong. At least I think he's partially right. The audiobook was really long. I also felt personally called out because he called out pescatarians and was like, hey, maybe you should figure out where the frick your food is coming from. And I was like, oh, okay, good point. It's really good. And in the end, he has this uh, appendix, which I really like. And it has lists a bunch of organizations that you can give to in order to protect um, people from sea slavery, to help people correctly identify fish and all this other stuff. So it was really, really interesting. I really liked it and I think you guys should read it and I really want to reread this one soon too. Oh, so good. I'm going to give this a five out of five because I really enjoyed it and I liked it a lot. I feel like I'm going to be giving out a lot of five out of fives in this wrap up, but it's fine. Yeah. The next book I read, I can't really talk about because it's a booktube prize book. All I can say is I enjoyed it. And I read that with just the audiobook because I did not have an actual physical copy. The next book I read is Morgue, A Life in Death by Dr. Vincent DeMaio and Ron Franskell. I really enjoyed this. This was fun. It was really interesting because it is like part memoir, but also part like stories from the morgue and there's this really cool call to have more people work as pathologists. It was really cool because it uh, it actually opens a case that I've actually studied before but the reason I studied it was different than like he talks about in the book. It was a case where sadly this young man was shot and he was African American shot by a white dude and we studied it for in my linguistics class to talk about his friend that he was talking to when he died and how uh, racism factored into people not believing her testimony because of the way she spoke, which is sad. But yeah, it was a really interesting book. I read this with audio and following along and I really enjoyed it. There's so much effed up stuff that he talks about and that can be hard to digest, like baby killing. That's not cute at all. There's like two specific different times when he talks about it and it's with two different people and it was intense. I really enjoyed it. It was really short. I like that it wasn't just his memoir but he also talked about really important criminal cases that he either had a role in 
or were happening around really influential times of his life and that was really fun and interesting to look at. I think this one was like a four out of five. Honestly kind of wished it was longer because I really enjoyed him talking about criminal cases. At times I was thinking to myself, okay boomer, because he would go off kind of like, ah, oh, when I was growing up we didn't have like video games. And I was like, okay, calm down. I didn't have video games either, so but otherwise, I really liked it. This next book I read is also a chunkster, and that is The Education of an Idealist, a memoir <laughs> by Samantha Power. And I really enjoyed this. But yeah, this is really long. I think it's over, like, what, 500 pages? Yeah, easily. And I really enjoyed this. Essentially, this is about, uh, Samantha Power's life and Samantha was a diplomat during the Obama campaign so it was really cool because I felt like not only was I getting to know Samantha but I was also getting to know Obama too. I will give this a 4 out of 5. I do think this is a tad longer than it needed to be although I enjoyed a lot of it. I really like diplomacy narratives so I really like learning about diplomacy so I found that really interesting. If you don't really like diplomacy, this is very diplomacy heavy. You probably won't like this book as much. I think those are the parts that I enjoyed the most about the book. The Ebola crisis was happening during when she was a diplomat to the UN. That was really interesting, the types of tactics she used and what she did to try and help solve those issues. And I found that really interesting. Yeah, I really enjoy it. I also found it really interesting to hear her talk about what it was like to be a mom and raising her children while handling all of these duties. So yeah, I really recommend it. I really enjoyed this. I read this with just the audiobook because I didn't have this at the time and now I do. <laughs> the next book I read is, is A Good American Family. And that one I thought was okay. I think I'm probably going to give it a 3 out of 5. I'm sorry, I just think it was kind of confusing. Uh, so it's essentially this memoir of the author's father and talks a lot about the Red Scare, which is ew, I don't like the Red Scare, it's gross. It felt hard for me personally to keep track of like which one is his father. It goes a lot of back and forth between talking about his father, also a little bit talking about his mother, and then about the actual history that was going on. This is not an era of history that I am super knowledgeable about, so it was kind of hard for me to keep track of like what exactly was going on and uh, what was directly correct connected to the author. I think it was good. I just didn't really connect to it. One good thing that came out of this book was I was reading it again over the holiday. I was with my grandfather and so I was able to have a conversation with my grandfather about the Red Scare and he was just like, I never knew anyone that was in implicated. I was never implicated but it was a witch hunt. It was really crazy. And I think the Red Scare is a really interesting phenomenon because it really has lasting impacts on today. Like you don't have anyone after the Red Scare who is openly communist. In my opinion, a little bit problematic because if we're America and we proclaim to be really free and you can believe whatever you want, but also you get a lot of shame and lots of bad looks if you want to call yourself a communist or a socialist. It's not cute. It's just very hypocritical in my opinion. The book was okay. I wasn't really into it. The next book I read was Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. I think. <laughs> this is the first book I read to get me started on the reading all of the Goodreads Choice Awards. And as a start, it was kind of okay. I think I'm personally going to give it a three. I think it was kind of boring. Sorry, I know it was really popular and people thought it was all really cute. And I do love the bi representation. That's all great. I thought it was like a cute book, but I also don't think there was much substance to it. I mean, it's just literally them going from one place to another place, like eating candy. It was okay. I didn't hate it, but I also didn't really connect that much with it. Sorry, that's really all like the thoughts I really have on the book. I think it's good for like a certain audience and I don't really think that audience is me. It would have been better for me to read this in like October time, but I didn't because I read things when I get them. To be honest, I don't know if I would like it much better if I read it in October time. Sorry. I made a lot of progress. I read a ton of books this month that are going towards the Goodreads Choice Awards. And so the next one going along with that is Over the Top. And 
I liked it. I thought it was fun. It was very conversational. I really liked that about it. It's very much an encapsulation of the author's personality, and he actually narrated the audiobook. It was a fun, wild ride. I do appreciate that at the beginning of the book, it states, like, here are all the trigger warnings. I have not read a bunch of books that have done that, and that is very helpful. That being said, I don't really think, not that the trigger warnings aren't necessary, it just didn't go into a ton of depth with those trigger warning topics, so it wasn't, at least in my opinion, too, like, traumatizing. Completely go with your own discretion on that. You know you best. And then at the end of the book, I believe, he provides a bunch of resources, which is great. A fun, wild ride, and it's just really cool, because it was just very conversational. I would give it about 4 out of 5. I enjoyed it, but it just didn't really blow me away. It was kind of very expected for the author, if that makes any sense. The next book I read was Recursion, and this is, again, another book I read for the Goodreads Choice Awards, and I like this. This one won the science fiction category, and I really liked it. I thought it was really interesting with the whole time traveling almost kind of aspect and the ideas of like multiple timelines and how just sort of soul crushing it gets and it gets really crazy. At first I was like I don't really know where this is going and then I just it sort of builds and it builds and it builds and then it just gets really crazy. I prefer my science fiction to be really heavy on the science bit and this wasn't as heavy on the science bit, but it was one where I could kind of see it being plausible. I don't know. I still enjoyed it. It was a fun, weird, wild ride. It wasn't really something I'd ever really read before, but I also don't really read a lot of science fiction. I think I'm going to give it like a 4 out of 5 because I really I liked it, but it was a little bit confusing at times with the whole multiple realities thing but I did I did like it just you know didn't blow me away but yeah I'd say read it if you're kind of interested in the whole multi timeline things and also like memory the next book I read is shout the true story of a survivor who refused to be silenced by Lori Halsey Anderson I really like this this is a poetry collection but it's kind of like a poetry narrative or poetry memoir and I really liked it. I love the cover. It's beautiful and it was just so like raw at times and it just perfectly encapsulated how someone would feel in that situation. I don't think the poetry aspect would impede the memoir part of it which was part of one of my concerns going into this book. This again was a winner of the Goodreads Choice Award category for poetry. Yeah, I really liked it. It was really good. And I'm gonna read to you the tabby bit. Just know how the works with the tabbies. Oh, this irritated me. So the author says, she made us sing Climb Every Mountain. Yeah, that one from Sound of Music meant when Maria and her family stop in, in a convent as they are escaping the Nazis. A song about doing hard things. Okay. My issue was that that was not entirely accurate. That's not what happens in Climb Every Mountain. Climb Every Mountain is what the, like, main nun lady is singing to Maria to, like, hey, go, follow your dreams, go be with your boy, and do what you gotta do to achieve your dream. They, they were not escaping the Nazis at the time, and that was part of the issue that I had with that coat. But otherwise, it was really good. I will say, I have one thing I had an issue with. I have not read Speak, which was like the other poetry collection the author wrote, and so that was a little bit hard at times to understand things that were going on in this book in the later chapters because she referred a lot to that. I'm like, I haven't read that. So that was a little bit irritating, and that's why this gets a 4 out of 5 for me. I read this on audiobook and following along. Boy, am I so glad to have this. Okay, the next book I read is The Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan. And I read this because, again, I'm trying to get up to the Titan's Curse? Different one. The winner of the middle grade Goodreads Choice Awards. Basically the goal is to read one of the Percy Jackson books every month, so by the time that December rolls around I will have read all the way up to the newest one that came out. So I'll be all up to date and all good on that. What can I say? It's a Percy Jackson book. It's really good. I read it with audiobook because I did not have the actual book. So I really like the character of Tyson. I like that all of the dynamics, how they changed. I just love how Rick Riordan utilizes 
myths and the knowledge of myths in these books. He really does his research. And yeah, it was just a fun book. Great book. You know, I can't emphasize the series enough for if you have kids who do have disabilities, specifically ADHD and dyslexia, it can be a life changer, but it was really important. You know, you don't often see that representation in books growing up. This is why representation is important, people. I think it's a really solid book series. I cannot believe it took me so many years to come back to this book series. Good series. I think it's like about a four out of five because I don't think it's like the best or whatever, but it's still really good. The next book I read, I also can't tell you about because it's for the booktube prize, but yeah, I read it and it's good. I also read it with audiobook and following along. But this next book is also a chunkster. Oh my god, I read so many chunksters this month. And that is John Adams by David McCall. <laughs> And this is the quintessential biography on John Adams, and that was blatantly clear for me while reading this. It was very long, and I would say at times not necessarily difficult to get through, but just the length really starts to wear on you, I think, or at least it did on me. I did watch the HBO series of John Adams when I was a really young. I want to rewatch it and then just kind of compare and contrast like with this book. I think it was nice to have watched that before because it really brings those scenes that are specifically talked to about in this book to life. I really enjoyed it. I might feel differently after rewatching this series but I can't do that because I don't have a DVD player here at my apartment right now. I have to wait till I go back to my hometown to watch it and I was waiting for this audiobook for a very long time and I'm very glad I got it and I enjoyed it. I think this is 4 out of 5 because really for me the length was really a hindrance to me. I audiobooked and followed along it just really started to grate on me and I was trying to do such big portions in 5 days so maybe that contributed to it. Really good biographer. I mean, he does his job. He pulls the historic writing so you really get an idea, feel of who he was like. My interpretation of John Adams is just an old man, a cranky old man, and a kind of like, like kind of like your lovable grandfather. And the last book I read for this month is also a book two prize book, so I can't really talk about it <laughs> other than it was good. And I read it with audiobook and following along. So that is it. That is my January wrap up. I hope you liked it. I hope you weren't too disappointed that you couldn't hear my feelings on some of the book two prize books. All of them are currently in the running right now and they're none of the books are ones that I am assigned. And so I don't want to put my opinions out there in a video like this and then have that affect other judges. Once they're knocked out, if they are knocked out, I will put my opinions out there of the books. How does that sound? Does that sound like a good compromise? You might have to wait a while to get my opinions on three of the books. Yeah, I enjoyed them. They're so good. Thank you so much for watching this video and sitting here listening to all of my reading. Do what you should do, like liking, commenting, subscribing, uh, sharing, all of that fun stuff. And yeah, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Let me know. I'd love to have a conversation with you guys in the comments down below. Ooh, ooh. Oh crap, I realize I haven't been doing star readings. Yay!